Okay, I want to quickly talk about bonding in metals. So far we've talked about metals bonded with non-metals. And this is why it's good to know your patterns in the periodic table, because if you know which side the periodic table your metals are on and your non-metals are on, then you'll be able to determine what type of bonding it is really quickly. So if you have a bond between a metal and a non-metal, we call that an ionic bond. And that was between our cations and anions. If we just have non-metals that are bonded together, so a non-metal with a non-metal, then that's what's called a covalent bond. Covalent meaning sharing of valence electrons. And the goal for both ionic and covalent bonds is to fulfill the octet rule that says that elements like to have the uh, a full valence, which is the outermost uh, highest energy electrons on the atom. So with metals and nonmetals, we have ionic bonds. With nonmetals and nonmetals, covalent bonds. Within covalent bonds, we have both polar and nonpolar bonds. And there's a separate video just on that part. But we haven't really talked about metals with metals. So for bonding two metals together, what I want to emphasize here is that this is not a chemical bond in any sort of traditional sense. When we're talking about chemical bonds, we're talking about ionic bonds, covalent bonds. Um, there's a new type of bond called a vibrational bond, which is a completely new idea and doesn't really um, bear on any of the conversations that we'll be having in this class. But with metals and metals, it's not so much a chemical bond, but we do have a model to talk about how metals mix together. And um, the mixture of metals, when we have more than one metal that are mixed together, we call that an alloy. alloy. So you've probably heard of alloys of metals. So this could be something like brass or bronze or steel or uh, something like white gold, for instance. So anytime you have a mixture of metals, these are um, usually homogeneous mixtures, meaning that you can't tell the difference by the naked eye between one part and the other. And we kind of think about them, at least we talk about them with other chemical bonds, even though they're not technically chemically bonded together in a traditional ionic or covalent sense, we still have a model that we can use to discuss how these metals stick together. And it does involve the electrons, so that's sort of why they're in this chapter. The model that we use is called the sea of electrons model. And it's also called the fluid model. You'll sometimes see it called this the fluid model, which is kind of weird because when we're thinking about metals, we usually think about solids, of course, except for mercury. Mm -hmm. And when we're talking about a sea of electrons model, we're saying that, well, metals in general, again, are solids. So I'm going to represent my solid here with these positively charged nuclei and kind of this orderly sort of orderly-ish array. Okay, so we have a series of positively charged nuclei. They're all kind of mixed together. Here's my solid. Now, if I'm having a mixture of, let's just say copper and tin, then this could be a copper nucleus. This could be a tin nucleus. This one down here could be copper. This one could be tin, whatever, etc. <clears throat> so now if you take the electrons from one of these atoms, one of these metal atoms, then the electrons are not very tightly bound. So here's my one electron over here, here's an electron over here, electrons, electrons, etc. Now all of these atoms are going to have electrons on them. And what we've learned about metals is that they're pretty quick to give electrons up. They're not very electronegative. Remember that electronegative means that the element is greedy to either pull electrons away from something else or it likes to keep its electrons. So it's kind of a, 
hoarder of electrons. And metals are much more loosey-goosey about their electrons. They like to just kind of let them go. So the electron from one atom is pretty free to move around this entire array. So this electron likes to move around here, this electron likes to move around here. They can kind of move wherever they want to within this overall array. And this is kind of the picture that we usually use to talk about it. So we have an orderly repeating ray, array of positively charged nuclei, and then the electrons from all of the atoms here are pretty free to move around. Hence the C of electrons model or the fluid model, because the electrons in this case are moving as if um, as if they were some sort of fluid, like what we think of as liquids or gases, for instance. Now if I was to put charges on this thing, so if I have this array here, and I was to put, um, you know, hook it up to a battery and put a plate that is positively charged on one side and negatively charged on the other. Then I'd have something that looks like this. I'm gonna redraw this kind of quickly. Just for clarity's sake. So here's my electrons again. And of course, there's gonna be multiple electrons on each of my atoms. The same number of protons as whatever it is that I have. <clears throat> now if I hook up a negative charge on this side and a positive charge on this side, that's going to cause all of the electrons in my solid here, in my metal, to all shift and move towards the more positive side of the material. Right? Opposite charges attract, my electrons are all negatively charged, they're going to want to move away from this negative side and move towards this positive side. So the net movement of all of my electron fluid here is going to go in this direction. And if I have electrons that are all moving in the same way at the same time, then this is called an electric current. Which is just the flow of electricity. This is the way that chemists kind of think about electricity, is the flow of electrons. And so if we can cause the right conditions for all these electrons to move in the same direction, then um, it's going to allow current to flow. This is what leads to the characteristic of metals, that they're so conductive. So metals can conduct electricity, and the, one of the reasons that they can do that is because each of these individual atoms is not very um, quick to hold on to these electrons. These electrons are pretty free to move around, and so if we set up the right conditions here for these electrons to all move in the same direction, then um, then they'll do that, and, and we can model it with this sea of electrons model. The other thing that this allows for is we said that the electrons on an atom account for most of the volume. meaning how much uh, space it takes up. So if I have all these electrons on these atoms, um, and they're pretty free to move around within the surface, if I was to apply some sort of pressure to this thing, so if I was to push down on this and apply some sort of force, like let's say whack it with a hammer, for instance, then all of these atoms are gonna compress downwards, compress closer together, and all of these electrons can move out of the way in order to allow these to get close together. And this is part of the reason that metals are malleable or shapeable. So when we talked about characteristics of metals before, we said, well, you can whack them with a hammer and they get really thin. So instead of like non-metals that are pretty brittle when they're in their solid format, when you whack a non-metal solid with a hammer, then it just busts into pieces. But a metal is going to get thinner and thinner and thinner 
or we can shape it in different ways. And the reason that we can shape it out of its shape and mold it in specific ways is because of this property, because of the movement of the electrons. So I apply some sort of force to it, the electrons can get out of the way. If the electrons are moving out of the way, then there's less volume there, which means that it can get nice and thin. So these are a couple characteristics that are accounted for by the C of electrons model. And again, this is not necessarily a chemical bond, but it is the way that we think about bonding between metals with other metals. And if you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to contact me and I'll talk to you guys again soon.